Welcome to the first Supernatural Scotland podcast, presented by me, Mark Smith. Please like my page on Facebook, where you can send me suggestions for locations, or share your own stories, which I would love to hear. You can also view my videos on YouTube, and please subscribe to that as well. Scotland is an ancient and mysterious land, and it still holds many secrets. Join me as we discuss some spooky locations and the strange creatures of Scotland. For each podcast, I would like to discuss a couple of locations, and our first location for this episode is at Overton Bridge. The Overton Bridge is located in Dumbarton. I was planning on filming an episode at the Overton Bridge, but what a story to start the podcast with. The bridge was completed in 1895 and holds a dark history. I have no knowledge of any supernatural events at Overton House itself, but the bridge has a mystery of its own. Due to the difficulties carriages had gaining access to the property, a bridge was built and completed in 1895. The bridge is a suicide hotspot for dogs, of all things. Dogs have a habit of throwing themselves off the bridge. Explanations have been anything from demonic possession to ghosts to animal sense. Dogs go crazy and they throw themselves off the side. If they do not kill themselves first time, they have been known to run back up and throw themselves off again. Hundreds of dogs have been believed to jump off the bridge, with an estimated 50 to 60 dogs dying. Then tragically in 1994, a man threw his very young son to his death from the bridge because he believed his son was an incarnation of the devil. He then attempted suicide. It's very tragic and mental health is a serious condition, especially now in these troubling times. It is important to talk to someone if you are struggling. Mental health affects everyone at some stage in our life and it's important we help each other through it. Now, back to the bridge. Do you believe the scientific explanation of it being animal sense or do you believe a supernatural cause? Might be an idea to leave the dogs at home if you are coming for a visit. Our second location is St Andrew's Cathedral which is said to be haunted by many spirits. It's a very old place. So the site was one of the largest medieval churches in Scotland. The temple has a dark history and some spooky stories. The White Lady of the Haunted Tower being one is said to be the most active ghost in the cathedral. It is said she haunts the graveyard around what is known as the Haunted Tower and the nearby parapet walk. It is said she died of a broken heart and has roamed the area ever since. Sightings go back as far as the 1800s. Most avoid the tower after sunset for fear of coming face to face with the lady in white. You may also want to check out the Veiled Nun of the Nun's Walk. It used to be an entrance to the monastery During the years of the plague, many infected would visit the cathedral in hopes of a cure. They would be turned away for fear of infection and die nearby. They say you feel like someone is watching you if you dare visit Nun's Walk. There have been reports of a nun walking down the road carrying a lamp. If you are unlucky enough to be approached by her, She will pull her veil back to show her mangled face. There are many stories of ghosts and hauntings, uh, as I mentioned. 
in the ancient town of St Andrews. I would suggest visiting St Andrews even if you don't fancy the spooky stuff. It is truly a beautiful place. Now it is time for our creature feature. For this episode, we are discussing vampires. Vampires are well known in Scottish history. Our story starts at Annan Castle, which was originally built in the early 12th century by King William the Lion to serve as a stronghold. It was built to guard against invasions crossing from Galloway. It also served to guard the route north to Lothian and Strathclyde. The castle was occupied by Robert the Bruce's father and grandfather. The myths surrounding vampires and the family began with Robert the Bruce's father, Robert de Bruce. The legend goes that the curse begun with a visit by the Archbishop of Arma in 1138. The Archbishop requested mercy on a wronged man. The Archbishop believed the man to be innocent, but this did not stop the hanging. There are a few different versions of what happened next, but it's fair to say the outcome was a hanging and the Archbishop was unhappy with that result. He laid down God's wrath on the entire family and the castle itself. The curse was blamed for any disasters the family faced. These included fires, sickness, the river flooding, and Robert de Bruce contracting leprosy. The worst of all being the arrival of a stranger from York, who arrived and was given a roof over his head by the family. The man married and became convinced she was cheating. He became jealous and focused on catching her in the act. Long story short, he did catch her in the act with a young man from the local area whom fled, and in all the commotion, the man from York was injured. He died in his sleep shortly later from a mysterious illness. Other people began to fall ill, and it spread quickly through the castle and surrounding areas. It was claimed the man was seen lurking around the shadows at night, looking pale and gaunt. This would come as quite a shock, given he was dead and buried in the cemetery. The story goes that he would be seen with a pack of wild dogs following him wherever he went, and he would attack people and spread the plague. It was also claimed he would rise from the grave at night to feed on the blood of those he attacked, and those people would die of the disease soon after. Two brave men whom lost their father to the plague, brought forth by this vampire, decided to hunt him down and destroy him during the sunlight hours. They found the corpse in the graveyard looking full of blood. As terrifying as this must have been, the men with revenge in their hearts attacked the vampire. They struck a blow to the dead body and its blood ran. They removed the body and dragged it from the village. They built a funeral pile. Then they burst the chest open and one of the men pulled the cursed heart out by his bare hand. They then burned the body. As claimed, once the body was destroyed, the pestilence ceased. As they say, fire purifies. This is a very old story from a long time ago. The story never mentions a vampire, however, I believe from this story, this was indeed a vampire. Annan Castle is now a complete ruin, and maybe this is a good thing. In 1954, in the Gorbals area of Glasgow, it was rumoured that two local boys had been kidnapped and murdered by a vampire. 
Police were called to the necropolis when a large group of children were seen armed with weapons and dogs. When the police investigated, the children told them wild stories of a seven foot tall vampire with iron teeth whom stalked the grounds of Glasgow graveyards. No vampire was officially found, but no sightings were reported after the hunt. Did they scare the vampire off, or was this just a group of kids all caught up in a wild story? Well, I hope you've enjoyed the stories on our first podcasts. I do plan to do some more, but as I mentioned before, please check out the Facebook page. Uh, You can just search Supernatural Scotland and the same with YouTube. And you can message me with any stories or locations that you uh, would like to suggest. And I'll look into them and see if I can use them in future podcasts or even uh, videos on YouTube. So until next time, goodbye. (laughs) 